Welcome everyone to this fireside chat segment as a part of the FreightWaves 3PL Summit. Uh, we're here today to talk a little about carrier capacity strategies. <clears throat> so as 2021 unfolded, carrier's, ca carrier's capacity continues to come at a premium. More freight's hitting the spot board due to routing guide challenges and 3PLs continue to become a greater outlet of value for shippers looking to find capacity and put their supply chain back together again. Today, we're gonna talk about some things to consider with respect to trying to source capacity in this incredibly challenging market. My name is Dave Broering. I'm the president of non-asset based logistics at NFI, and I'm here to talk with Mark Ford. And I'm the COO of Bluegrass. Welcome, Mark. And, uh, you know, I'll set this thing up for us a little bit, and then we can get into the, the fun part, which is trying to figure out how to, how to deal with this. Uh, and without spending too much time on it, you know, the global supply chain for all the way from, you know, import locations or export locations around the world, all the way down to the local market here in the U.S. is a flaming tire fire, for lack of a better phrase, right? Everything has its challenges. Everybody is stuck with capacity challenges. But specifically, as we zoom, you know, zoom in on the U.S. market, the, the issue we've got today that we're dealing with is that we have a shortage of supply of capacity. And as compared to previous marketplaces that we were dealing with, those marketplaces were driven by a demand for capacity while the, the market was able to add drivers. And so where we stand today, over 100,000 drivers have left the market in the course of 2020 as a result of various different factors related to COVID, related to struggles with driver hiring uh, and training with uh, trucking schools, as well as the drug and alcohol clearinghouse. Additionally, as we enter 2021, nothing's really gotten any better. The, the drug and alcohol clearinghouse continues to get worse. Uh, driver training schools aren't able to hire and train at their levels that they were previous to, to 2020. And drivers, more importantly, are able to find other work in booming markets like construction in local markets. Uh, additionally, we saw a, a lovely polar vortex in February, which just helped us feel even more uh, how tight the market was and how quickly things can turn. And so today, as we talk, what we're really trying to get to the bottom of, how do we navigate this? How do we create better relationships with carriers? Yeah, I think, you know, you, you framed it up perfect. You know, we're in a, in a market that, you know, is seeing obviously more volatility than a normal marketplace that has its predictable seasonal fluctuations. Uh, and I think when you talk about carrier pass capacity strategies, uh, it's more important now than ever that you've invested the time to build those to help navigate through these, you know, difficult times. So I think it's a perfect topic to kind of hit on. You summarize the market and where we're at. And I think it's, uh, you know, it, it's really important to hit on the strategies that, that each of the companies are going to employ. And, you know, you know, how do you navigate through these challenging times and build your strategy going forward? Because not only is the market shifting, but also the way that carriers want to interact with, with 3PLs and their, and their partners and other partners is also changing as well. Yeah. And, you know, obviously every day is different for a broker. That's part of both the best and worst things about what we do. But we think about it, I think where we start is what type of broker you are, right? And what's your go-to-market strategy? What type of freight do you typically end up with? How do you think about that when you try to break those down? Yeah, I think it's important that you have to figure out like what type of 3PL you really want to, to be. Like, what is your strategy? Because if you want to compete in the marketplaces, you know, such as contract and, and outsource, um, you have to make that front end investment in the carrier capacity or carrier fulfillment strategy. And it's not a cheap one, uh, as you know. And, you know, obviously both of us have been, you know, fortunate enough that we've actually worked for companies that have, you know, heavily invested on the front end side of that so that you can uh, navigate through these tough times. And that's what your customers expect from you. You know, they're not only expecting, you know, you to be able to handle, you know, their freight and, and execute on their freight during times when, you know, the normal seasonal fluctuations are occurring, but, you know, they want to help, they want help during these challenging times for them, you know, as, you know, their capacity dries up and as they try to get a grasp on what's actually happening in the marketplace so they can pivot on their side as well. Right. And, and just thinking about it from our perspective, right, we as a broker, very contract centric, right? So going into a market where capacity is extremely tight, we know we have to think about how we manage our existing care relationships with our existing repetitive business and also recognize and trying to be real, looking in the mirror to recognize who we are, that when it comes to spot, we've got to be a lot more particular about what we go after because our network 
and our reps aren't built to just go running after freight that's in random locations all over the country where we haven't built a consistent readily care, you know, available carrier base. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a great point because, you know, uh, we're, we're blended a little bit differently than you are. So, you know, I would say about 60 of our, you know, percent of our freight actually comes from that, you know, outsource or contract business. And, you know, 40 percent of it, you know, 35 to 40 percent of that is spot. Uh, and so we have built out a little bit of a different network and, uh, you know, and, and so, but the foundational pieces are just, you know, they're all the same. If you can't display to your carrier network that you truly want to be a partner, uh, you're not going to have success with any type of strategy and you're not going to have success, you know, convincing yourself that you actually have a strategy. If you're not able to actually go out, you know, carriers want consistency. They want to know that they have an ambassador that's going to actually, you know, step in you know, and represent them through all the interactions and the fluctuations in the marketplace the same. They want consistency. Yeah. And, and that's what we see more than anything else is, you know, we call carriers who are used to dealing with us in a contract format and we're asking them about moving spot freight with us. And they're a little like, whoa, whoa, hold on, what's going on here? Like, this isn't exactly what we expect from you guys. And so I do think that's a big part of it is like, understanding how your carriers expect to do business with you and then recognizing when you've got to pivot and help them understand that well this is actually for a similar customer or the same customer it's just in a different place and we wanted to talk to you about it because you've told us in the past that you have trucks there etc you know whatever that might be that, that's you know that's another good point too because you know that just that displays that you understand you know their network you know, and, you know, because you're actually going out and saying, well, hey, look, it, on top of what we are currently doing business with you, we have some additional, you know, freight that we can actually, you know, give you a little more money on. And I think that they actually appreciate that when you're coming to them with opportunities and they know that they're a priority in your network. Uh, and, that, and that's really important for them because, you know, if, if you're just going to treat the carrier like a partner when it benefits you, you're going to have you know, you know, you're going to have an adverse effect to that when, you know, when the markets do flip around. And, you know, I think, you know, we spoke offline and um, when you, when you, when you start talking about the impact that, you know, that partnership has, um, especially when you, when you need to mitigate, you know, some of these drastic, you know, rate increases. And we talked about, you know, some markets will fluctuate up to 40% now, you know, compared to, you know, four or five years ago. And if you don't have those partnerships built up to even just handle a little bit of an adjustment or an overflow of freight, um, you can really, you know, it, it can, you know, massively impact, you know, your, your ability to execute from even not even just a profitable level, but just trying to mitigate your losses just to try to plow through, you know, some of the challenges that you're facing, because, you know, that's, that's really kind of what your, your customers expect from you. And that's what your carrier partners expect from you as well. Yeah, and I think you, you bring up a good point there and sort of, you know, transitioning a little bit and talking about value creation and technology. There's been a massive change in the way that technology mm -hmm. has helped people be aware of what's going on in the market. And I think if we just think about the contrast and, and obviously you and I being slightly OG and, you know, from, you know, we brokered freight in the 90s. So at least we have some and late 90s, but we did broker freight in the 90s. <laughs> you know, it's very different than it was today and it but really even if you rewind to five years ago the the transparency of information in our world has changed dramatically and the way that that is changing how we interact with our shipper partners with our carrier partners etc cetera, etc cetera, you know the one i i always come back to that happened very recently that sort of highlights this is that during polar vortex one in in 2014 it took the average spot rate on the market a hundred days to go up 18 cents. And that was roughly, it was a little bit more than 12%. During yeah. Polar Vortex 2 in February this year, it took seven days for the rate to move 18 cents. So maybe we want to talk a little bit about, you know, how you handle this. What does it mean for dealing with existing relationships? What does it mean for developing new relationships when there's so much rate data available so quickly in a market that's changing like ours? Yeah, absolutely. And I think you have to you have to look at all your business you know through different lenses you know the the shorter haul kind of you know geographical freight that you know that kind of moves itself you know when you're talking about you know intra regional you know that that freight consistently isn't going to you know fluctuate you know as high as if you're moving long distance um, 
you know, specialized type of freight is temperature controlled and flatbed. I mean, you're going to, that has a massive impact and, you know, your, your carriers expect that, you know, yes, they have contractual commitments to you, but when the market fluctuates to a certain extent, they also expect, Hey, look, you know, we want some sort of, you know, benefit from the market too. And, you know, I think the relationships that, that you build with them, you know, dictate that. And, you know, we, we saw, you know, some rates and you probably saw the same thing. If you were going from, you know, far end West coast to East coast, you know, a couple of weeks or a couple of months ago, I mean, rates got up to $10,000. I mean, there's no contract rate anywhere, you know, in our books that you have, you know, anywhere near that rate. Um, and, and as long as you're taking care of your carrier partners, you can mitigate that because we were able to actually save, you know, a couple thousand dollars from what the market rates were dictating. And at the same time, we were able to share some of those, you know, increases in rates and, and not to say that we were getting the same thing back from, you know, our customer partners, but, you know, the carriers, you know, they understand, hey, look, as the market adjusts, if we're able to actually look at each other and say, okay, let's, let's be fair about this. Um, you know, because if all of, if all of our freight that, that handles or, or that, that, you know, fit that, description all went to the actual market rates, you know, we, we would have gotten clobbered. So uh, I, I think, you know, that kind of, you know, just, you know, exemplifies the, the importance of actually having these relationships built up because you can actually have a conversation and that conversation is usually a positive one that usually leads to, you know, just consistency and, you know, and customers getting the same carriers and, and, you know, performance and, and all that, instead of having to go to the market and using carriers that, you know, you may not have a lot of experience with. Right. And the truth of the matter is for both sides in a new carrier, new lane scenario is that neither party is particularly uh, efficient when it comes to moving the first load for a customer the first time, right? You don't know the shippers, you don't know the consignees, you don't know how, when to call and ask for help. Um, if you're getting the runaround at a facility, et cetera, et cetera. So there is some value in that repetitiveness that comes along with it, where the rate game doesn't exactly always always add that value, right? And as we talk about that building care relationships, trying to find that right strategy, trying to, you know, really figure out the right way to procure the right partner for the right loads. You know, let's talk a little bit about the different avenues that we've got to go to here. And, and in my opinion, and I think you agree here, is that you continue to have to meet the carer where they want to be and, and to find the right way to interact with them based on the best way for them to interact rather than sort of trying to figure out how to push your initiatives on them. I don't know where you where you land on that one. Well, absolutely. I think that's the important thing when you're talking about a carrier capacity strategy for 2021. You know, we talked about the foundational pieces of a carrier strategy being the same. But I think as you're talking about today compared to three or four years ago, um, really, it's more about having you know, it's meeting the carrier and how they want to interact with you. I mean, some carriers do enjoy that you know, daily phone call. They, they do enjoy that, you know, camaraderie and the interaction piece. Uh, and, and, and so those relationships don't necessarily change as much. Uh, but you, know, you do have carriers out there that pre prefer to use an app. They prefer to actually interact and say, hey, look, I, I see a load that I want. I see a, you know, a rate that makes sense for me as long as, you know, the information matches up in what you're displaying and, and kind of, you know, what I'm expected to do they prefer to just be able to do the business on their own. And, and so you have to be able to adapt to that, you know, marketplace or you completely ignore a good chunk. Not, I mean, it's a good chunk of the marketplace out there that wants to do business that way. Uh, the smaller, you know, guys just want to do business that way. Um, and, and then, you know, finding just different ways to make their jobs more enjoyable. Uh, when you talk about tracking, you know, there's really no reason to bother a driver all day long. Uh, as they're, you know, trying to actually do their job. So finding, you know, ways to actually either whether you build your own app or you integrate with, you know, something that's already out there or multiple because, you know, the, not every carrier uses the same platform. Um, so you do have to, you know, get creative in, in choosing which platforms and how many platforms you're integrating with. Um, but even in just like submitting accessorials or document sharing, um, Carriers want to have that visibility to know what they need to do to get paid for the work that they've already completed. And I think, you know, finding those easier way, easy ways for them, you know, to interact with you and at the same time offering them flexible payment options. You know, it's not every, not every carrier fits in the same bucket and, 
You know, they want to have the ability to either get paid faster, regardless if it's a discount or not, um, or, you know, take the traditional and, and, and go that direction. So I think those are the, the different strategies. Those are the different things we didn't think about as much, you know, 5, 10, 15 years ago that today are, you know, they're important, they're imperative that you adjust to what, you know, today's marketplace is actually dictating uh, or you're going to miss out on, you know, a certain segment of the carriers that, that are that are good carriers that, that have, you know, good, you know, consistent uh, performance records and they just want, you know, they just want to be left alone and do business the way they want to do business. Yeah, and it's really that idea of a carrier as a customer, right? I mean, this it, there are there are plenty of situ situations over the last ten years where you you technically could look at it and say the market treats a carrier like a vendor, and the the shipper is really the customer that you know is harder to land, it's harder to get their attention, get their freight. But the truth of the matter is that you know your adaptiveness as a individual dealing with carriers needs to be just as flexible as it would be if you were dealing with a shipper. Because meeting them where they want to do business, finding the right way to get the information to them at the right time, the right way. And then to your point, removing pain by putting things like Hubtran in place, things that automate and help to facilitate easier, frick, more frictionless um, you know, effort between the two. So you can focus on getting things done without bothering them and they can focus on driving the truck and making the money without having to worry about being pestered with 17 freaking check calls. Yeah. And I mean, really, you, you hit the, you know, the nail on the head. It's just a, you know, also taking into account that, you know, having a driver have to go get another app is not the answer either. You know, I mean, it, it may be the answer for some companies, but it isn't for most of them. You know, they, they've already got enough apps. And so, and there's enough, you know, good technology out there that, you know, it, it's, it should be easy to find something that you can actually plug and play with. And, you know, and at the same time, it's important that you don't veer away from your strategy either, because just because you're using, you know, a platform doesn't mean you necessarily just want to throw all your freight out there. Carriers still need to, to know that you are, you know, prioritizing their relationship instead of just, you know, throwing everything out there for the masses. And, you know, I think so I think it's important that as you start plugging in with with the different technology platforms, that you also take into account what your current strategy is and you don't, you know, veer away from it too much. Right. And that's the point, right? What, what got you here, we should continue to keep, you know, keep getting you there. It's just a matter of, right. How do you have to tweak it in order to make sure that you're doing the best by the carrier thinking about them as an equal partner in the transaction that you're helping to, you know, facilitate by connecting a shipper and a carrier together. Yeah, and I think the other part of the equation is is adapting to you know what's going on in the market today. Not just from a not just from you know a rate perspective or anything like that. It's you know you were able to go ten or fifteen years in the past without really changing your carrier capacity or sourcing strategy. But today's marketplace it, it evolves, and I think you need to to adapt your strategy as you you know i don't think you veer away too far from it but you do need to be more flexible in adapting and evolving your strategy so you know i think that that's an important thing because if if you're still looking into the past it'll work for a certain percentage of the the, the transactions that you're doing or the interactions that you're performing but it won't for you know the totality of what you need to be successful in in today's marketplace yeah and i think if you know as we kind of try to close this out Adaptation has sort of been like the thing that we all should be getting tattoos over, you know, how we've dealt with, you know, with COVID for the last year and trying to figure things out. Uh, and it's always been sort of the three PL strategy as an intermediary, but I, I think it transcends that in the sense that we've got to figure out how to continue to add value for somebody that is one of the toughest jobs in the country to do. It's one of the toughest businesses to keep operating you know, with all, all kinds of headwinds that they face every single day, managing a very tough driver base, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, any last thoughts that you've got around, you know, strategy development implementation for 2021? I think the important thing is, is just treating them as part of the equation. I mean, I think far too often carriers are left out of that equation piece and, and they, they are an extremely important part. They're just as equal as we are. They're just as equal as as the shipper is, you can't, you can't perform a transaction without somebody actually pulling it. So, you know, um, I think it's really just more about, you know, really getting back to that whole, 
let's treat this carrier network as a partner. Let's make sure that they understand that they're important. And, you know, the more you show it, the more you're going to benefit from it. Great. Thanks, Mark. It was good to chat. Uh, and obviously good to catch up and, and look forward to see how 2021 plays out. As always, thanks for having me.